Hello and welcome to this natural science lesson. In today's video, let's learn about the Minura, Proctutis and the Fungi Kingdoms. We are on page 26 and page 27. So remember that the other day I told you that we got five main kingdoms. These are the kingdoms. So Animal Kingdom, Plant Kingdom, Fungi Kingdom, Proctutis Kingdom and Minura Kingdom. In today's video, let's learn about Fungi, Prototist and Munira Kingdom. I will start with Munira Kingdom. So, there we go. I'm in page 26 and I will use the CD player of your book. Recordad que os subí los audios en una carpeta que ponía unidad 1, 2, 3, 4. Si abrís la carpeta de la unidad 2, voy a hacerlo yo también para que lo veáis. Vale, audios. Um, aquí lo teníamos en el talking book. Me voy al primero, donde pone page 26, y lo voy a ir reproduciendo para el mismo tiempo lo escuchéis vosotros. También os dije que podéis usar el programa del VLC Player, que este nos daba la oportunidad de escuchar el audio de forma más lenta. Para ello tenéis que abrir el programa, darle a ver y mostrar la barra de estado. Si le dais a mostrar barra de estado, os acaba de aparecer aquí abajo 1.00. Esa es la velocidad de reproducción normal, ¿sí? a cámara normal, ¿vale? A vosotros, como ya os dije, os recomiendo que le bajéis un poquito la velocidad. Si empezamos a escuchar el audio, page 26. The Manera, y hacemos clic and fungi kingdoms. Aquí en el 1.0, we classify living things into groups. Arrastramos la barra hacia la izquierda. Kingdoms. And sounds. There are five much different kingdoms. Lower. Suena Manera, muchísimo más lento, ¿vale? Yo os recomiendo que lo hagáis en casa, ¿vale? Si queréis seguir la lectura al mismo tiempo que lo vais leyendo vosotros en voz baja a una velocidad de 0,75, está bien, ¿vale? Así le podéis seguir el, el ritmo al, a la persona que lo está leyendo, ¿ok? Yo voy a poner en velocidad normal, 1.0, 1.0, and let's begin. Comenzamos. Page 26. The Manera, Protoctista and Fungi Kingdoms. Ok. The Minera, Protoctista and Fungi Kingdoms. Os vais a encontrar muchas veces que aparece la palabra Protoctista, Protoctis o Protist. Se dice de las tres formas, ¿vale? Yo a veces digo una, digo otra, es lo mismo. En español significa Protoctista. Tenemos el reino Monera, el reino Protoctista y el reino Fungi. The Minera, Protoctis and Fungi Kingdoms. So, let's keep listening. We classify living things into groups called kingdoms. There are five different kingdoms. The Monera, Protoctista, Fungi, Plant and Animal Kingdoms. Okay, so we've got five main kingdoms. Monera, Protoctis, Fungi, Plant and Animal Kingdoms. In today's video, let's learn about the Monera Kingdom, Protoctis Kingdom and Fungi Kingdom. Today let's see three kingdoms, okay? And we're going to study four main characteristics of each of them. We're going to study characteristics about shape, characteristics about movement, characteristics about nutrition, and characteristics about reproduction for each of them. For the Minera, Protoctist, and Fungi. As you can see, for a Fungi kingdom, we don't study the movement. Para el reino fungi no vamos a estudiar la característica del movimiento porque únicamente hay que decir that they can't move, que no se pueden mover. Por eso no aparece aquí el cuadradito con el movement, el movimiento. Ok, let's start with the Monera kingdom. The Monera kingdom. Bacteria belong to the Monera kingdom. Monerans are microscopic, but not all share the same characteristics. Okay, bacteria belong to the Munira Kingdom. When we listen to Munira Kingdom, it's the same that Bacteria Kingdom. Muchas veces se llama el Reino Monera el Reino de las Bacterias. ¿Por qué? Porque el Reino Monera está formado por todas las bacterias. Okay, Munira Kingdom is made up of all bacteria, living things. And what can we say about Munira's? Munira's are microscopic. We can see them at first sight. And not all share the same characteristics not all share the same shape, not all share the same nutrition, not all share the same movement, and not all share the same reproduction. 
they've got different characteristics. Okay, let's start with the shape. Do you remember what's the meaning of shape? That's right, shape is forma. So let's see about shape in Mineras. Shapes. Monerans are simple unicellular organisms. They don't have bodies. The shape of the cell varies according to the type of organism. Mo okay, Moneras are simple unicellular organisms. They are unicellular. Remember that when we say unicellular, they are made up of just one cell. And they don't have bodies. They don't have arms, they don't have legs, okay? They don't have bodies, just the bacteria itself. And the shape of the cell varies according to the type of organism. In your book, in Unit 1, you've got a picture. Let me look for it. Okay, this one. These are the different shapes that bacteria can have. So, some bacteria are spherical, and these are the cocos. Los cocos en español se conoce como cocos. That is the spherical shape for bacteria. Los bacilos, they are long shapes, okay? And vibrios, espirococos, y demás. Tienen nombres muy, muy raros. Uh, but I wanted you to learn is that bacteria have different shapes. We can distinguish between spherical shape, long shape, or even with a flagellum, or even one, more than one flagellum. Do you remember what a flagellum? ¿Se acordáis que era el flagelo? The flagellum is the tail of the bacteria. Era la cola que tenían las bacterias, and it allows it to move around. Les permitía moverse por el alrededor. So these are the different shapes of bacteria. In your book, you've got another picture, uh, and it's here. Esta página, esta foto la teníais en vuestro libro. I think that it's in page 19. And you can see the same, uh, different shape for bacteria, cocos, bacilos, and other shapes, right? Sometimes it's got one flagellum, and other times they got more than one flagellum, right? Okay, that is about shape of bacteria. Let's see about the movement. Movement. Some monerans have a tail called a flagellum that helps them to move around. Others don't move. They stay in one place. Okay, this is what we said before. Some mineras have a tail called flagellum. Algunas bacterias tienen esa especie de cola llamada flagellum. In unit one, you've got this picture. So that is a bacteria. And this long tail is the flagellum. And that's what allows the bacteria to move around. Okay, good. Let's see what else. Others don't move they stay in one place. There are some other bacteria that haven't got any flagellum and they can move, so they stay in the same place. For instance, uh, the bacteria you've got in your table or the bacteria you've got in your hands uh, probably can't move. So they stay in your hands or stay in your table. But we can find other kind of bacteria when we find in the river or in the sea, in a lake, that got a flagellum and can move around the water. In this picture, in the picture regarding unit 1, you can see a bacteria with a flagellum that is moving around a liquid surface. Okay? Lo que os estaba diciendo, algunas bacterias sí que tienen ese flagelo, sobre todo para moverse en superficies acuosas, but others, like the ones you can perceive in your table or in your hands, las que nos encontramos en las manos, en la mesa, they don't have that kind of flagellum and they can move around. Okay, good. Let's continue with bacteria or let's continue with Munera. Let's talk about nutrition. Nutrition. Some monerans produce a substance that breaks down plant and animal matter. They are heterotrophs. This helps them to absorb nutrients. Other monerans make their own food. They are autotrophs. Okay, nutrition. Some monerans produce a substance that breaks down plant and animals matter. So, mineras or bacteria produce a substance that can break down, break down, you know what I mean, of break down, okay, descomponer or romper plant and animals matter. La materia animal o la materia de la planta. So, bacteria can produce a substance that can break down plant and animal matter. Uh, what happens is they are heterotrophs. 
heterotrophs. It's a complicated word to say in English, it's true. Heterotrophs. Significa heterotrofo. But what I, have, um, what I want you to study is the main difference between heterotroph and autotroph. Lo que me interesa que entendáis sobre todo es la diferencia entre heterotroph, heterotrofo, and autotroph, autotrofo. Son nombres muy raros, pero la diferencia es muy sencilla. Heterotroph, uh, they can't make their own food. They need other living things to feed. Los heterótrofos no pueden fabricar su propio alimento. They can make their own food. They need other living things to do it. Necesitan a otros seres vivos para poder alimentarse. But autotroph living things, los seres que son autótrofos, they can make their own food. Pueden hacer su propio alimento. Like plants, como las plantas. And in this case, some bacteria are heterotrophs and many others are autotrophs. Algunas serán heterótrofas y otras van a ser autótrofas. Remember, heterotrophs, they can't make their own food. They need other living things to make it. And autotroph, they can make their own food, like plants and like some bacteria. Let's continue with reproduction. Let's listen to it. Re reproduction. Most Monerans reproduce by dividing. That is, one cell becomes two separate cells. Okay, reproduction. Most manuras reproduce by dividing. Do you remember when we got one cell and it reproduces, it gives to two identical cells? That is the case for bacteria. Here I have a picture where you can see it much clearer. Okay. Oh, there is a gif. So in this picture, we can see how bacteria are reproducing. It takes some minutes, but if you see the gif, at first, we got just two or four bacteria and suddenly we got many, many, many of them because they are divided into two identical bacteria. This is the way bacteria reproduce. Okay, let's see how they grow. As I told you before, it takes some minutes. Esto se pasa en una serie de unos minutos. No que tarda tampoco muchas horas. Okay, bacteria uh, reproduce too fast. You see here in the, in the picture. Okay, good. So that's all for the Minera system. Sorry, Minera Kingdom. <laughs> Esto es todo del reino de las, de las moneras. Now let's see another kingdom. That is the Protoctist Kingdom. Let's listen and read about it. The Protoctista Kingdom. Algae and protozoa belong to this kingdom. There is a wide variety of Protoctists. Each type has specific characteristics. Algae. Ok, algae se escribe algae. Escrito algae significa algas en plural. Si fuese en singular sería alga. Escrito solo alga. ¿Vale? Es un plural irregular. No se forma añadiendo una S ni una S. ¿Vale? Algae significa algas. Algae and protozoa belong to this kingdom. Dos ejemplos de, del reino protoctista son las algas y los protozoos. Algae and protozoa belong to this kingdom. There is a wide variety of protoctists, and each type has specific characteristics. Nos dice que hay un amplio rango, una amplia variedad de seres protoctistas, and each of them has got specific functions or characteristics. As always, let's learn about the shape, nutrition, movement, and reproduction. Let's learn that four characteristics for protoctist kingdom. Vamos a estudiar cada una de las cuatro características. Come on. Shapes. Unicellular algae are so small, you need a microscope to see them. Multicellular algae, on the other hand, can grow up to a few meters long. All right, unicellular algae. So before that, we can find unicellular protoctists and multicellular protoctists. Una diferencia importante. In bacteria, just one unicellular. Las bacterias solo eran unicelulares, but protoctist kingdom we can find unicellular and multicellular. Aquí en los protoctistas nos podemos encontrar de los dos tipos, unicellular and multicellular. Unicellular algae, algas unicelulares, muy 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 pequeñitas, are so small, so small that you need a microscope to see them. Okay, they are so small you need a microscope. But there are the multicellular algae Multicellular algae, on the other hand, can grow up to a few meters long. 
And these are the ones you see when you go to the beach. Estas son las típicas que veis cuando vais a la, a la playa. Las, multi, las pluricelulares, ¿eh? porque son más grandes de tamaño. It's impossible you can see um, unicellular algae. Es muy difícil que seáis capaces de ver una, una alga unicelular, porque son prácticamente invisibles, son muy, muy pequeñas. Encima están en el agua, nos cuesta más verlas. ¿eh? But multicellular algae can grow to a few meters long. Las multicelulares, las pluricelulares, en español, sí que pueden crecer hasta varios metros de, de largo. Ok. Now let's see about uh, nutrition in Protoctis Kingdom. Seguimos dentro del reino protoctista. And now let's learn about nutrition. Nutrition. Algae contain chlorophyll and carry out photosynthesis to produce food. They are autotrophs. Other types of protoctists are heterotrophs. Okay, nutrition. Algae contain chlorophyll. Chlorophyll. So, if they call chlorophyll, they've got chloroplast. And if they call chloroplast, they can carry out the photosynthesis to produce food. Do you remember what other living things can carry out a photosynthesis? That's right, plants. ¿Os acordáis de las plantas que también podían llevar a cabo la fotosíntesis? ¿Y por qué? Why can plants carry out a photosynthesis? Because they've got chlorophyll. When it's living things got chlorophyll, you're able to produce their own food. Cuando tienen la clorofila, pueden llevar a cabo la fotosíntesis, and so they can make their own food. Y por lo tanto, pueden hacer su propio alimento. And do you remember what's the name of the living things that can make their own food? Mm -hmm. Autotroph. Acordaros. Autotroph. Living things that can make their own food. Los seres vivos autotrofos, autotroph in English, they can make their own food. Pueden producir su propio alimento. There are some algae, there are autotroph, but other types of protoctis are heterotroph. Los hay autotrofos y heterotrofos. Exactamente igual que nos pasaba con las bacterias, que había de los dos tipos. Heterotroph and autotroph. Ok, vaya nombre, ¿verdad? <laughs> ok, now let's see about movement in protoctis. Seguimos dentro del reino protoctista and let's learn about the movement. I changed the CD. Habría que cambiar el CD. Nos tendríamos que ir al CD 27. Movement. Some, such as protozoa, don't move. Others move in different ways. Amoebas, for example, move with pseudopods or false feet. But paramecium move using cilia. Okay, that is quite interesting. Movement. Movement en movimiento. Some, such as protozoa, don't move. Hay algunos que no se pueden mover, like protozoa, como los protozoos. But there are other types of protozoos that, yes, can move it. Pero hay otros tipos de protozoos que sí que se pueden mover. An example of protoctis that can move is the amoeba. La ameba, que se escribe así en inglés, amoeba, right? Amoeba, for example, move with pseudopods. Pseudopods. Pseudopods significa false feet. Pies falsos, ok. Pseudo significa falso, and pods, pies. Pseudopods, falsos pies. And paramecium move using cilia. Y hay otro prototista que se llama paramecio, ¿no? escrito paramecium en inglés, que también se mueve, pero no se mueve con flagelo, se mueve con cilia. ¿Mm? Esto lo vamos a ver mucho mejor en un vídeo que tengo por aquí. Este protozo es un paramecio. Los paramecios viven en agua dulce, como estanques o charcas. Su superficie está cubierta de unas estructuras llamadas cilios que le permiten desplazarse en el agua. Este otro protozoo es una ameba. Las amebas se mueven mediante pseudópodos, que son prolongaciones de su propio cuerpo y que también utilizan para capturar el alimento. Ok, en este video we see two examples of protozoos. Hemos visto dos ejemplos de protozoos. Recuerdo, para orientarnos, estamos dentro del reino protista, Protist Kingdom. Inside the Protist Kingdom, dentro del reino protista, podíamos encontrar two, uh, many types of protozoos, muchos ejemplos de protozoos. Some of them are the amoeba and the paramecium. Y algunos de ellos son el paramecio y la ameba. Vamos a verlos. Aquí los veíamos en la imagen. 
como nos decía, que tenían cilia o cilios. En español se dice cilios, en inglés cilia. Their small hairs son como pelillos pequeños que tienen por la membrana que les permiten desplazarse. ¿Ok? And this is a paramecium, un paramecio. And that is a mida. This is the false feet. Estos son los pies falsos, los pseudopods, los falsos pies que tenía la, la meba. Parecen pies y es lo que le ayuda a desplazarse a la, a la meba. Ok. Um, let's learn about reproduction. So let's listen. Reproduction. Protoctists reproduce in two ways. Some produce spores. Algae cells divide into two. Okay, talking about reproduction, we can say that protoctists reproduce in two ways. Two ways. Tienen dos formas para reproducirse. Some of them produce spores. Algunos producían las esporas. But others, like algae, divide into two. Pero la mayoría de ellos hacen un tipo de reproducción que es dividiéndose entre dos. Dividing into two. For instance, the paramecium and the amoeba divide into two. Estos dos se dividían entre dos para reproducirse. I've got here another video in which you can see how amoeba reproduced dividing into two. Let's see how the amoeba, let's see how the, sorry, let's see how the amoeba reproduced by dividing into two. As you can see, it's starting to divide into two same parts. It's quite blurred, but it's because of the microscopic. And there we go. Two parts. Everything you see inside the amoeba are the different organelles, like vacuoles that are inside the amoeba. And split. Okay. Uh -huh. There we go. One amoeba and another amoeba. So let's have a quick review how there was the first. We got one amoeba. And after reproduction, we got two amoebas. Okay. You can see here. Good. Let's continue. All right, now let's finish with the fungi kingdom. Let's finish with the fungi kingdom, el reino de los hongos, o el reino fungi, the fungi kingdom. So let's listen for it. The fungi kingdom. Mushrooms, mold, and yeast are all fungi. They have several characteristics in common. Shapes. Most fungi are multicellular organisms, like mold, but some are unicellular, like yeast. Many multicellular fungi consist of a cap, a stem, and a network of hyphae, long tubular structures. Okay, the fungi kingdom. When we think about mushrooms, when we think about mushrooms, cuando pensamos en hongos, Siempre seguramente nos viene la imagen this picture when you go to the countryside or the forest and you collect mushrooms. Okay? But there are other, there are other type of fungi that are not called the same shape. Hay otro tipo de hongos que no tienen la misma forma, like mold and yeast. Mold era el mo, yeast las levaduras y también se consideran fungi kingdom. So let's learn about the shape. Shape most fungi are multicellular organisms. Like mold, la mayoría son eh, pluricelulares, como por ejemplo el mo. Está mal escrito en vuestro libro, le faltaba una M, mold es mo. But some are unicellular, like yeast. Pero otros son unicelulares como la levadura. Many multicellular fungi consist of a cap, stem, and a network of hyphae, long tubular structures. Okay, so I'm going to show you a picture of a mushroom. I'll cut here. And these are the main parts of a mushroom. The cap, 
que sería el sombrero o la gorra, la capa superior, the cap, the stem, and this kind of roots, esto me diríais seguramente roots, raíces, but you're not calling it that, no se llaman así, you're hyphy, hyphy, en español se llama ifas, son como las raíces muy finitas que tienen los hongos, uh, that is where they absorb water and nutrients, but you're not roots, you're hyphy, ok, So these are the three main parts, the cap, stem, and hyphae. Put it here. Okay. Now let's see reproduction. Let's listen to it. Reproduction. Fungi produce spores that are carried by the wind. Okay, reproduction. Fungi produce spores that are carried by the wind. Fungi produce spores. The spores are stored here. Okay, here there are many, many, many spores. And that the spores, remember, do you remember what the spores? When we were at class and I take the cleaner in the blackbird and I hit on the blackbird and the kind of smoke. ¿Se acuerdan de esa especie de polvillo que formaba la pizarra cuando le dábamos con el borrador? Las esporas. Okay, when the spores fall in the ground in the forest and they can grow up new mushrooms. Cuando esas esporas caen al suelo, pueden crecer nuevas, eh, nuevos hongos. And do you remember when I, I told you, uh, when you collect mushrooms, when you go to the countryside, when you go to the forest, and you want to collect uh, mushrooms, you have to use a kind of basket, not use uh, plastic bags. Do you remember why? Yeah? The basket allows the spores to fall into the ground, but when you use a plastic bag, you are contributing to stop mushrooms reproduction. So it's quite important that every time you go to collect mushrooms, you use a kind of um, a kind of basket like this, okay, a basket like this, because it's highly recommended to uh, allow spores uh, so that mushrooms can reproduce once and again. But if you use a plastic bag, all the spores are containing the plastic and you may probably throw the plastic bag into the rubbish, so mushroom cannot reproduce anymore. Okay. Once we see uh, reproduction, let's finish this, uh, this kingdom, let's finish the fungi kingdom with nutrition. Let's listen to it. Nutrition. Fungi produce a substance which breaks down plant and animal matter. This enables the fungus to absorb the nutrients from the decaying matter. Okay, and finally, nutrition. Fungi produce a substance which breaks down the plant and animal matter. They produce a substance that breaks down the plant and animal matter. And this enables the fungus to absorb the nutrients from the decaying matter. Here I've got a picture. It's in Spanish, but it's a good example. So here, in the hyphae, in, la, in las cifas, uh, mushroom can produce a kind of substance producing a sustancia that helps to break down the plants and other animals, que ayudan a descomponer la materia viva de las plantas y de otros animales para así absorber los nutrientes. Normalmente, cuando hay hongos, cerca hay vegetación o restos de materia orgánica. Aquí estáis viendo en la imagen cómo las raíces de un árbol están muy, muy cerca, muy vinculadas a las hifas, a las hifas del hongo. ¿Por qué? Porque así se puede alimentar. Es como que se aprovecha. El hongo se está aprovechando del alimento que cogen las raíces para cogerlo él mismo y alimentarse. ¿Mm? Son un poquito parasitarios, por así decirlo. No, pues eso es, eso es la, lo que nos decía el libro, que producía una sustancia, unas enzimas que ayudaban a descomponer la materia viva y obtener así nutrientes a través de las hifas, que en inglés eran las hyphae. ¿Ok? So that's all for the, these two pages. Esto es todo lo que teníamos en las dos hojas. Es mucha información, es un vídeo un poquito más largo de lo normal, pero es que hay muchísima información aquí. El próximo día en clase trataremos de hacer una especie de resumen o de tabla en la que pongamos las características principales de cada uno de los reinos que hemos estudiado hoy. Minura Kingdom, Productive Kingdom and Fungi Kingdom. As always, um, once we finish these uh, two pages, it's time to complete the vocabulary list of pages 26 and 27. So you scroll down here, The vocabulary list in page 26, 27, we see the verb stay, que es el verbo permanecer, break down, el verbo descomponer, heterotroph, heterotrofo. Remember that heterotroph means that you cannot 
make your own food. No puedes fabricar tu propio alimento si eres heterótrofo. Human beings are heterotroph living things. Nosotros somos heterótrofos. No podemos producir nuestro propio alimento. Algi, algas en plural. Protozoa, protozoo, que era un ejemplo de ser vivo protoctista. Dentro del reino protoctista estaban los protozoos, acordaos de eso. A wide variety of significa una amplia variedad de. Me interesa mucho que la pongáis en amarillo, se usa bastante en inglés. A wide variety of. Y lo contrario, a few, unos pocos. Amoeba, escrito como veis aquí, es la ameba. Pseudopods eran los false feet, los pies falsos. Cilia eran los cilios, es decir, los pelillos que permiten el movimiento. Se me olvidó decirlo, pero en la imagen que teníais aquí en el libro de la unidad 1, todo esto que tenéis por aquí, estos eran los cilios, que en inglés es cilia, los pelillos que tienen las, las bacterias para moverse. Hay veces que tienen flagellum, hay veces que tienen cilios, hay veces que tienen una cosa u otra. Ok, let's continue the list. Um, mold es el mo, cap, el sombrero del hongo, la parte de arriba. Network of hyphae es la conexión de hifas, es decir, las, los hilillos estos pequeños que tenía el hongo, hyphae, right? Wind, el viento, fungus, hongos, and decaying matter, es la materia en descomposición, la que aprovechaban los hongos para alimentarse. Ok? So, that's all for today. You should have written these words in your notebook at home. Estas palabras sí que las tienes que escribir en casa. And next day, let's do the chart, let's make the chart, and let's continue by studying the minera, fungi, and productive skin tone. That's all for today. Thank you for watching this video. Bye bye.